This is Harsh Rules, I'm Ben Harsh, and today we're going to learn to play Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon was released in 2019 by Academy Games and designed by Gunter Eichert. This game supports 2-4 to four players and takes 1-2 to two hours to play. In the near future, the global terrorist organization known as Legion, the League of Evil Gentlemen, intent on obliterating nations, has lived up to its namesake and defeated the world's militaries with its dark matter technology and conquered the entire world. But do not fear, there is still hope. Well, sort of. After the downfall of freedom, former Legion minister Persephone Brimstone had a crisis of conscience. When Persephone learned about Legion's mad schemes to destroy reality itself, she realized she wasn't truly evil. No, deep down inside, she was just bad. So she broke away from Legion and formed her own organization, called Mayhem, the multinational agency hunting evil masterminds. The stage is now set in Seoul, Korea for Mayhem to face off against Legion. In this epic showdown of bad versus evil, who will win? It's up to you to find out in Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. Now, with that epic piece of lore out of the way, Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon is a board game set in the Saints Row universe and inspired by its video game counterpart, Agents of Mayhem. This game uses modular tiles and multi-level buildings to take board gaming into the third dimension. Players can move miniatures to use buildings as cover, or jump to the rooftops to attack their enemies. They can even detonate explosives to damage floors and eventually bring the whole building tumbling down. Players may choose to side with Legion or Mayhem and assume the roles of several colorful rogues and villains from the Saints Row universe. Each character is represented by a unique miniature and a customizable character board that allow players to fine-tune their tactics and abilities to their taste. So, if all this sounds interesting, then stick around, because I'm going to break down the rules for Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon is a massive game with tons of stuff to look at and it can be quite challenging to know where to start. But don't worry though, with this breakdown, we're going to spend the first episode learning about the player turn phase and using this as a guide to walk through the game's main components. This includes a detailed look at the elite unit boards, which are the dashboards for controlling the minis on the game map, the construction and layout of buildings, and finally, the refresh cards. Once we understand all these game pieces, this will provide us with a solid foundation of knowledge to build upon in subsequent episodes where we will get much deeper into the gameplay mechanics. So, with all that said, let's get started. During the game, each player will alternate taking turns and complete the following three phases. First, in the draw phase, the active player draws a refresh card from their faction's deck. Second, the player will choose one of their characters to activate for the turn. This activates the miniature in the gameplay area as well as that character's board. The player will then spend the colored cubes from the wells at the top of that character's player board. Each well will only hold a certain number of cubes which represent that character's abilities. Each ability is indicated by a unique color. Spending cubes allows the character to move, jump, and attack perform special maneuvers, use gadgets, and absorb damage, among other abilities. These game actions are classified into three types. A main action, which can only be performed once per turn. Each add-on action can be used once per turn. And instant actions, which can be conducted multiple times by any of the player's characters, whether they're activated or not. Instant actions can also be used during their opponent's turn. These icons can be matched to the action panels on the player board to see the number of uses allowed, and when they can be used. 
Once the player has conducted all their actions, then they proceed to the refresh phase. In this phase, the player turns over the refresh card they drew in the first phase. Each refresh card will show a row of symbols. These symbols will indicate which aspects of the player board can be refreshed. Some symbols indicate which cubes can be regenerated. Other symbols may remove cubes that track injuries, positive or negative status effects, or replenish the special abilities of upgrades and gadgets. And with that, the active player's turn is complete, and then it's their opponent's turn. Now that we've covered the player turn, let's look at the main components in the game incorporated into this process. Let's look at the layout of an elite unit board. Elite unit is game terminology for one of the main player characters like Hollywood here. This character player mat is essentially the dashboard for the Hollywood Mini on the game map. And like a vehicle dashboard, this one contains all the indicators and controls to operate the character. So let's walk through Hollywood's board to see how it all works. The silver banner along the top of the board shows each character's attributes. Shield and armor are for defenses. Speed, focus, and tech are for actions. Mayhem is used to draw and play mayhem cards that trigger special events. And at the end of the banner is an icon that indicates the character's health. Beneath each of these attribute types is a well. Basically, recessed slots in the board that players can drop cubes into. The better a character's attributes, the more cubes will fit in the wells. Cube capacity may be different between characters, and some characters do not have any ability with certain attributes, which means they will not have a well at all. Cubes are removed from wells when taking actions or receiving damage. They may be regenerated back after a period of rest, exactly like the stat bars in a video game. However, whenever a character receives damage, red wound cubes are applied. First to defenses, removing shields and then armor, and after that they begin impacting and remaining in action and mayhem wells. The player gets to decide which of these wells to place the cubes in. Be aware though, red wound cubes prevent regeneration and using attributes to their full ability. And once these red wound cubes equal the health stat, then the character is overwhelmed and removed from the game. Also like video games, the next section on the Elite character board is for upgrades. Agents of Mayhem Pride of Babylon has three classes of upgrades. Skill upgrades, Dark Matter upgrades, and Legion tech upgrades. Each upgrade type on the board also utilizes the well system. This allows a set number of upgrades that can be placed in each well. Two spaces for skill upgrades, three spaces for dark matter upgrades, and three spaces for legion tech upgrades. The game also includes character dossiers that show all of their upgrades. We'll talk more about upgrades in a subsequent episode of this series. The center of the elite unit board contains a character's basic actions. These actions are all shown on their own distinct panel. During the main section of a player's turn, they can spend cubes to conduct these actions. The cost of each of these actions is represented by an open hand holding one or more colored cube symbols. The first panel in this section shows Hollywood's main weapon, the assault rifle. Next to this are additional panels showing Hollywood's other core actions. He can sprint, jump, or dash. The frequency a player can conduct these actions are determined by the symbols we discussed earlier. Main actions can only be conducted once per turn. For add-on actions, you can use any number of add-ons, but each one can only be used once. And instant actions can be conducted multiple times by any of the player's characters whether they're activated or not, and even used during an opponent's turn. At the bottom of the board are slots for gadget cards. With these slots, a passive, weapon, or action gadget card can be slid right into the board itself. Each of these categories has its own icon, which matches the one on the eligible card. If 
Finally, take a look at the portrait on the board. Various actions and effects in the game will add statuses to a character. These statuses can benefit or handicap the character in a number of ways. Status effects are tracked with blue and red markers. If a character is under the effect of a status, place a marker on their portrait. Now that we know how the Elite Unit Board works, let's take a look at the environment and put together a building. In Agents of Mayhem, each building is composed of cardboard floor tiles and plastic support beams. The ends of the beams are threaded which allow you to position them into the holes in each level and then just screw them together. Let's construct our first building, the Scandal Dance Club. The tiles used to construct the building are all numbered. The Scandal Dance Club tiles are numbered as Building 4. The building number can be found watermarked on the corner of each level tile and on the backs of a few. The foundation of the building, the dance club itself, is marked 4-1, the dark matter lab above it 4-2, and the roof tile 4-3. Now that the building is set up, let's walk through the terrain legend and other useful symbols you can find on each tile. First though, I'm going to highlight the floor spaces to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, much better. You'll quickly notice that this game uses a square-based map system. Most spaces on the map are bordered by thin black lines. The corner of these spaces also have a symbol. With a square-based map system, movement can be conducted in two ways. Vertical and horizontal movement crosses lines. The movement cost in MP, or even the eligibility to cross, is governed by the line type and symbols at the end of a line. Diagonal movement is governed solely by the symbol in the corner of the space. Most spaces are considered clear. They have thin black lines and a black plus symbol. Now let's look at some other line and symbol types. Red lines with red shield symbols indicate obstacles in the path. Crossing these lines or symbols cost three movement points. Thick black lines that typically run around the edge of the building tiles represent walls that cannot be crossed. Now, let's also look at some other symbols on the map. The beam symbol represents cover. No movement is allowed through this symbol. There are also black triangles that represent openings such as doorways. Stair symbols mark ways to ascend or descend through buildings. And this yellow symbol indicates explosive areas on the map. After all, this couldn't be based on a video game unless it had explosives carelessly scattered across the map. Finally, let's play some miniatures. Miniatures mark a character's map position and the direction they're facing. The base of each miniature is round behind the miniature and slightly octagonal to their front. The flat side on the front indicates the direction the character is facing on the map. This facing will indicate the direction a character can move and attack. We'll talk more about miniatures and movement in the next episode. Now, let's take a look at the refresh cards. The final part of a player's turn is the refresh phase. In this phase, the player reveals the card he or she drew during the earlier draw phase. The player is then able to use the results on the card to refill cube wells on the elite player boards they did not activate during the turn. This essentially means the character they did activate will need to wait until the next turn and not be activated during that turn to regenerate their cubes. This is one of the game's strategies. Keep using the same character and push them towards total exhaustion or switch to another character and allow the one you previously used to rest and recover. The results on the card are a series of symbols, so let's take a moment and learn what each of these symbols represent. A quick note before we get started defining these symbols. Refresh card effects are applied to each character not activated during the turn. Therefore, you will apply the effects to one character and then apply them again to the next. You do not divide these card effects between characters. 
With that out of the way, let's now talk about the symbols. Every refresh card has at least one of the refresh and action cube tricolor symbols. This symbol allows the player to regenerate one yellow, green, or blue cube in the matching well on their unit board. The shield symbol allows the player to place one gray shield cube into the shield cube well. The health symbol allows a player to remove one red wound cube from any well. The next symbol requires the removal of a positive and negative status marker from each unit board. The removal status icon is also an exception in that it requires you to remove markers from the activated board as well. We'll talk more about status effects later in this tutorial series. Finally, the question mark symbol refreshes specials. This symbol is only in effect if the unit's abilities, upgrades, or gadgets require refreshing. If applicable, this symbol refreshes all of these unit's special uses. You may also notice other symbols that appear on the refresh cards. These symbols are related to the advanced rules in the game. For your first few playthroughs and tutorial lessons, ignore these symbols until you're more acclimated with the basic rules of gameplay. Hopefully this first episode has got you familiar with the components and the overall game structure of Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. In the next episode of this series, we will take a much closer look at movement and work our way towards combat. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and share with your friends. To be the first notified when the next episode of Harsh Rules becomes available, please hit the bell icon for notifications. And as always, this has been Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.